Hey guys, John Lux here, back with a new blind playthrough. This is System Shock 2. Uh, so this was released in 1999 by Irrational Games and Looking Glass Studios. Uh, I, I do appreciate that they put the copyright for that down there because it used to be owned by a, what, star insurance company? It still might. Uh, but I believe that they've acquired at least, maybe they've reacquired the stuff from the insurance company. It's... I don't remember it. Not super important. The important thing is System Shock 2. So uh, this is a DOS game, or at least originally was. Recording it, there may be some glitches. Hopefully not, fingers crossed, but uh, I, I did some testing. And uh, like the gamma, if it's too dark, please let me know. Uh, there is the brightness setting, the gamma setting for this game increases the brightness on my monitor but will not increase it on the recording itself i don't know why similarly it has another weird thing with the uh with the resolution you can see the black bars on the side of the screen right now the pillar boxing that's just for the title screen the rest of the game is in the 16 by 9 format so uh that should yeah kind of got me at first and then i did a test recording and i'm like hang on a sec the edges of the screen are cut off that's no good uh, but if you played the first one, you'll know, well, I mean, System Shock 2 is kind of legendary for being all about Shodan and the whole, you know, we're going to get the famous line here in a second in the intro, like you're panting and sweating, blah, 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 meat creature or whatever. If you haven't played the first one, I do recommend it. It's fairly inexpensive. You can buy it on GOG. Play the enhanced version, though, because the controls are a little bit more modernized as opposed to the original controls, which are a little, you know hard to get into but it's still it's still really good it's still really good i did do that for this channel as well and uh you know if that's something you're interested interested in you can check that out i realized i say the word okay a lot during those videos and even even today so Something I'm working on, but uh, but let's begin. I don't know if you guys want to see the options real fast. I guess we could do that. Apparently, there's multiplayer as well. I have no interest. I don't even know if that's a possibility. Customize controls. I haven't looked at that at all. Mouse sensitivity. It started here. I had to turn it way down because it's super sensitive. These are your video options. These are your audio options. Right. It has binaural sound, so if you want to use, you know speakers with that or headphones with those capabilities that is great and that's your your game options no subtitles no subtitles apparently there is a mod for that uh which i don't have but let's jump in start game options or wait what are options here same options okay let's do normal difficulty start game look at you hacker up at the Pathetic creature of meat and bone, panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? System Shock 2! In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess destined to inherit the earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. So a little backstory of the first one, the summation. Military January science 3rd consumer. Is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems. Nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. 
Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNN Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. This incredible union of government and corporation is made possible by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek, fast, revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. All right. So that is the intro. First thing that I did forget to remember or forget to uh, mention is apparently this used to be a different game before EA became the publisher and it be and it was repurposed, I suppose, to be System Shock 2. Regardless, I think it's still going to be great. I really hope there aren't any cyberspace sections though from the first one cuz that was that was not good. Um, second, a couple things to, to mention. First, we're probably not the same character. This takes place 42 years later. The original hacker, you know, presumably 18 to 24. It's highly unlikely that our character is 50 or 60 years old. Just saying. So probably different different person. Also, the uh, Rickenbacker, was it? <coughs> little security ship that's going to be piggybacking along with the the Von Braun piloted by a Diego presumably the son of the original Diego that helped Shodan well become crazy I, I did think it was really neat once they showed it like connect or whatever it was like it was almost like Terminator eyes. There was like a spotlight and another little red one. It looked very sinister somehow, and I'm sure that was intentional because that's probably how Shodan got on board, I would imagine. And then, of course, there was a little thing like we've been hijacked by an unknown, unknown entity, security breach, blah, blah, blah. I suppose it's entirely possible it's a physical thing, but I assumed it was like a virus, like Shodan's pulling like the Sigma from Mega Man X. But we'll see. We'll see. It's entirely possible. You know, Shodan was in some sort of like a toaster or, <laughs> or something. I, I, I'm i sure they'll really explain how we... Uh, how she wasn't actually dead from the first, but we'll see. Cat hairs. Crazy. Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN recruitment facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The grav shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the grav shafts. That's where we're going, I guess. So this is awkward because you, it's like we're on ice. Like you kind of slide to a stop. It's, it's a little bit weird. And the mouse sensitivity is still, I mean, it's, it's better, but it was, it was crazy before. What's up dudes? Interesting. The side-to-side -side movement is slower than the front and back. That actually makes sense. That's a little bit more realistic. Can we uh, do anything with the phone? No. I'm going to sniff all these panels and rub my face against all these walls. Just trying to get the, the feel. How does it look on there? It's hard to tell, but... Steam vent. Please recycle. Oh, cigarettes and either coffee or barf. Could be either. Can we do anything with this phone? No. Well, I don't, I don't think so. I mean... And presumably we're signing up for the military. To street level UNN training and recruitment. Step into the grav shafts to proceed to the street level recruitment. 
United States Navy, UNN, United Nations Navy. And this goes down, I guess. Yep. We want to go up. Woo! Don't get hit by a car. Or a truck. Try optimum. Yeah, I noticed they were re recently relicensed or something. More coffee and those cigarettes look way bigger than before. Or maybe they just have more filter. Like the, the fifth element, I think, where the cigarette was like 90% filter. Just a, a tiny little cigarette on the on a filter. That makes sense. That's funny. What about you guys? What's up, girls? Can I open this door? Okay, right clicking. Oh, space is jump. E doesn't appear to, wait. Oh, we got the leans. We got the leans going on, that's good. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. If it's not your first time, welcome back. I was actually gonna play a different game for this, uh, at this point and then, um, I don't remember who recommended it, but someone's like, oh, you should do System Shock 2, and I've been wanting to play it, and I was like, ah, you know, let's, let's get around to that finally. What is back here? Oh, man. My nose is itchy because of the cat hair. Jack. That looks like a walkway, maybe. Or just, no, maybe not. Maybe I'm looking too far into it. What is that? Happy noodles? Oh, yum. Noodles are delicious. Basic training. Wow. You just say, hey, I want to join, and they just shove you right into basic training, I guess. Before you choose your career, you'll want to learn some basic abilities. First, you should go into the basic training center. When you're done with basic training, proceed to the advanced training area. Okay. Yes, robot man. Well, to pick up some basic skills you'll need to get by in the service, enter this Cyberlink booth. Inside, you'll learn the basic skills you'll need to get started. Am, am I in the Cyberlink booth, or is this the booth itself? Whatever. Welcome, trainee. While you're in our virtual training courses, we provide you with a simulated cyber interface. This training interface is identical to an actual military-grade cyber interface. Now, let's try it out. Move the mouse. See how it changes where you look? Yes. That means you're in shoot mode. Hit the tab key. This puts you in use mode, where you can use your mouse to interact with items. Oh. Open your primary MFD, or multifunction display, by clicking on the MFD button near the bottom of the screen. This display shows your strengths in various areas. When you're ready to continue, Press the tab key to go back to shoot mode. Try changing between modes until you get the hang of it. Follow the red path along the ground to the next training station. Okay. Oh, those were like walls, presumably, that I couldn't, um, couldn't go by. So that makes, I mean, you know, that's, of course, it makes sense. It's inventory. I don't know what these are. Oh, I guess maybe we get to upgrade, like carrier, carry a bigger inventory. Drag weapon here to equip. Implant here to equip armor. And what is this? So two implants, presumably. We have... I appreciate the little bar at the top. That's helpful. Current health points. Current psi points. That's what I was looking at earlier. Psionic strength is high. Like, psionic abilities? That's crazy. Bring up research. No items being researched? We could do research in this? That's awesome. See, the original was more like a Metroidvania. A first-person Metroidvania, which I thought was interesting um, and and fun. This could be interesting. Like, I don't know how the research thing worked. Load query cursor. Like, what is zero nanites? This is probably, like, something on, like, what is this thing on the screen? Right-click seems to get rid of that. Bring up the map. No map data. Okay. Nanites and cyber modules. What is this? Return to shoot. Okay, that makes sense. 
personal data assistant, key card access recorder, emails, deck one engineering. How do I, uh, oh, wait, you can't go to the left or that's weird. I guess we're logs deck two, but I'm not, maybe we should, I mean, you know, it's probably like a little glitchy cause we're not supposed to be in here yet. Help text. Okay. A little PDA. That makes sense. Can I click on this again? Yes. Key card. Presumably this means we don't have key cards. Character MFD. Strength determines your inventory capacity and the amount of damage you inflict in hand-to-hand -hand combat. All armor and some weapons have a minimum strength requirement. That is good to know. Endurance determines maximum hit points and resistance to radiation and toxins. I don't... In the first one, radiation just did damage, I believe. Psionic ability determines your skill in using psionic disciplines. The duration, range, and damage inflicted by psionic disciplines can be dependent on Psy. Okay. So this actually seems more like a first-person RPG, whereas the first one was more like a first-person Metroidvania. That's a different or important difference, I suppose. Agility determines your movement speed and reduces falling damage and weapon kickback. Cybernetic affinity improves your chances of successfully using hack, repair, and modify skills. Also lessens the number of dangerous nodes. Hmm. Tell me about tech. Hacking skill determines your chances of hacking various computer systems. Repair skill determines your chance of repairing broken weapons or computer systems. Modify skill not learned. Modify skill determines your chance of modifying a weapon to an improved state. Interesting. Maintenance skill determines the amount of improvement you can make to the condition of a weapon. You must have a maintenance tool to use this skill and research. Skill not learned. Research skill determines the efficiency of your research. Researching alien organs can yield useful information. Some items cannot be used without first being researched. Is it weird that I'm getting kind of like excited now? I'm getting like XCOM vibes and uh, I don't know. Standard skill increases the amount of damage you inflict with standard weapons. Some standard weapons have a minimum skill requirement. Standard's probably like, you know, that was a weird sound. Probably pistols and ballistic weapons, firearms. Uh, skill increases the amount of damage you inflict with energy weapons. Some energy weapons have minimum skill requirements, so like beams and stuff. Heavy. Skill increases the amount of damage you inflict with heavy weapons. Have Some heavy weapons have minimum skill requirement, of course. So presumably like rocket launchers, stuff like that. Exotic. This skill increases the amount of damage you inflict with exotic weapons. Some exotic weapons have minimum skill requirements. So I assume exotic is probably... Alien weapons, if that's a thing. Sigh. Okay, what are these? <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, I assume... No, it does not appear to pause stuff first tier neural capacity are we gonna read all of these holy cow uh yeah let's get them out of the way these buttons select which tier of sonic disciplines you wish to purchase so there's okay oh and f1 first tier neural capacity this is required for first tier sonic disciplines increase your maximum side points by two all first tier disciplines cost one side point for use. Let's not do Psy stuff right now. Well, we could go to the exit, but they said follow the red path, so we don't want to we don't want to just skip the to two. To pick up items, center them on your screen and right click. This will automatically place that item into your inventory. Okay. To view your inventory, press the tab key. 
You can move items around your inventory by left-clicking and dragging them around. To drop an item, drag it from your inventory into the 3D view and release the mouse button. Okay. Right-click. That's a little... Oh. Bottle of juice. I guess you have to be within a certain range. Yes. To pick up items, center them on your screen and right-click. This will automatically place that item into your inventory. To view your inventory, press the tab key. You can move items around your inventory by left-clicking and dragging them around. To drop an item, drag it from your inventory into the 3D view and release the mouse button. Huh. Okay. Well... I wish it gave me more, more information about how much, uh, like I use items like buttons and computers, center them in your view and click the right mouse button. All usable items will have brackets around them. Highlight the button on the pillar and right click. This will activate the lift. Try it out. Try it now. If you can still see your inventory display, it means you're in use mode. Hit tab to return to shoot mode. I do appreciate them being, can I not use? Oh, I see. So it's literally a, like an elevator button, not just turn it on. Um, I thought I was on it. Was I not on it? Okay, it's a hologram, I guess. That sucks. But that makes sense. No, I wish it would tell me, like, how much... Because I assume they heal, but it doesn't say how much they heal for. The object before you is a med hypo. Pick it up, and then press tab to go into use mode. Right-clicking on the med hypo will use it and restore some needed hit points. Your hit points are displayed by a bar in the lower left corner of your screen. Many objects in your inventory can be used by right-clicking on them. It says use to apply. Okay. Ah, it's one. I assume we don't keep this once we're out of here either. Okay, what about this? Oh, it regenerates. It's like the, um... Oh. Okay. Do these respawn as well? They do. Interesting. But it looks like it only gives about 10. See the crate in front of you? Yes. To search it, center it on your screen and right-click. If you are in use mode, simply move the pointer to the crate and right-click. To take an item from that container, simply left-click on it. This will automatically place that item in your inventory. To close the container window and return to shoot mode, press the tab key. And what is used to apply to current research? Small quality quantity of fermium. One of the most important tools you have as a soldier is your PDA. This device stores audio logs, emails, and other useful information. Click on the disk icon near the bottom of your screen to bring up the PDA display. Currently, the contents of your PDA are empty. Now pick up the audio log in front of you. Press the U key to play the log you just picked up. Okay. This message is coming from the audio log you just picked up. You can use your PDA at any time to play any audio log or email you've received. In the field, the PDA is also used for keeping track of your current mission objectives and obtaining help information. Interesting that it plays only in your left ear. Let's, um, I want to see what this does. Let's use to apply to current research. Please insert correct chemical. I, all now right. It's time to learn about jumping and mantling. To jump, simply press the space bar. Some surfaces can be mantled onto by holding down the space bar. Mantling lets you pull yourself up to ledges and other high places in front of you. Give it a try. Interesting. Oh. 
Okay, so let's... That is helpful, actually. Alright, what about... To climb a ladder, simply walk into it and look upward. You'll automatically start climbing the ladder. Well, that's good to know. Oh, I can't... What happens if I jump? Then you can jump off. So you can't just automatically fall. Alright, let's exit. You've done well. Remember, if you're unclear on any aspect of what you've just learned, you can repeat the training as often as you wish. Good to know. Let's do some advanced training. Presumably gunplay and stuff. If you've completed basic training, you're ready for the advanced lessons provided here. Advanced training will familiarize you with the three key areas of military service. Weapons training, technical training, and psionics training. Approach the Cyberlink booth of your choice to train in that area. When you finish training in the three areas, proceed directly to the recruitment center to choose and start your military career. Do we have classes? And I can't bring up the, the tab option All anymore. All right, wannabe. If you want to learn the weapon skills it takes to even think about joining the Marines, come on in. We're looking for a few good men. Good to have you on board. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, the UNN has kindly provided you with a virtual cyber interface and all the simulated skill levels you'll need for the training tasks. But don't get too cocky. They'll disappear once you leave the booth. Oh. I see. So we start with, like, probably zero. That's good to know. All right. Well, what now? Now we'll teach you how to handle a firearm. Pick up the pistol and the clip from the table. You can equip the weapon in one of two ways. Bring up your inventory and drag the pistol to your weapons equip slot near the right hand side of your inventory. If that's too slow for you, you can use the hotkeys on the keyboard. Press two. If the pistol was in your inventory, it will equip for you automatically. To lock and load the ammo clip, hit the R key or hit the reload button on the lower right corner of your screen. Once you've loaded the firearm, take a shot at the dummy robot by pressing your left mouse button when in shoot mode. Notice how its health bar gets shorter as you chip away at it. R to reload. Got it. Huh. Does it have... Hmm. See, I thought I hit it in the sh in the head, but it doesn't appear like it actually has localized. Like headshots probably don't do more damage. So, just aim for center mass. Also, there's a lot of recoil. Some items need to be charged with energy before they can be used. Pick up the laser pistol. Now use the recharging station nearby. The recharge station will juice up all of your energy-based items. Oh. Weapons, batteries, you name it. Okay. Can I hit reload? No. So what does the 10 mean? I assume that was like the number of clips. Okay. I see. All right then. Uh weapons are not fine wines. They do not get better with age. The colored dot on the lower right corner of the screen tells you what kind of shape your firearm is in. Green is good, oh. red is bad. To fight the effects of wear and tear, a soldier with maintenance skill can use a maintenance tool to improve the condition of his weapon. Just pick up the tool, open your inventory, and drag the tool onto your pistol. Remember that maintenance tools are only good for a single use. I see, yeah, five. I thought that was the number of clips. Oh, norm or reload. What is norm? Oh, really? Okay. 
Oh yeah. Ammunition drained. Ammunition drained. Yep. The uh, now we're down to three, huh? Disposable maintenance tool. Oh, shoddy three. Excellent eight. Got it. Perfect ten. Now I understand. So that uh, maintain five. I assume that's the number of points that you get per thing then, right? Determines the amount of improvement you can make to the condition of a weapon. Okay, that makes sense. Do I just keep this out the whole time? Guess so. Good work. Now you're ready for the Marines. Take a look at the other training areas first before you enlist. They might just come in handy. So we're just going to be a Marine. Is that how it works? Inside, we'll teach you the basics of some technical skills you'll need in the Navy. Well, I guess tech... I mean, Marines are Navy as well. They're a division of the Navy. Aren't you going to talk to me? Welcome. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, we'll provide you with a temporary cyber interface and the skills you need to accomplish the training tasks. But they'll only last so long as you're in the booth. Right. Okay. I guess go to this. The object in front of you is a container of nanites. Nanites are consumed whenever you perform technical tasks, such as hacking or repairing. When you pick up the container of nanites, they do not go in your general inventory, but are instead displayed in use mode on the bottom left of your screen. Walk over to the keypad by the door and try out hacking. Okay, that's interesting. So it's almost... <sighs> Sounds kind of silly, because in the original System Shock... I'm trying to think. You could... You had hacking tools that would instantly hack uh, a thing, but you could also either find a key, like a key number thing, or uh, like rewire stuff. There was a few different things, and they were basically mini games. This is more like, oh, we're gonna... This kind of feels more like we're gonna complicate things just to make it a little bit more RPG-ish. That makes sense. Okay, how do we... the keypad by right-clicking on it. To the right of the number pad, you'll see an orange tab labeled Hack. Left-click on the tab. Text will appear indicating the difficulty of the hack and any bonuses that apply. Click on the Start button to begin hacking. You'll see a grid of nodes. Clicking on a node will either turn it bright or dark. To successfully hack, you must connect three bright nodes in a straight line. Beware the ice nodes with the red outlines. If one of these turns dark, you fail the hack, and you might break the item you're working on, or worse. You can restart your hack attempt at any time by hitting the reset button, though you'll have to pay the nanite cost again. Okay, initial difficulty 50%, hack skill 3, so minus 30, CYB stat 1, final difficulty 15, one ice node. Basically, you don't want to activate the ice things, is what they're telling me. Cost 3 for that, I guess. Click start to proceed. Oh, right, right, right. Not the thing. Not the thing that says click start to proceed. You gotta click the little button down here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do I just like... What am I doing? That's it? You just make three in a row? Can I, uh... Um... So the door doesn't want to open now? Is, is that how this works? It only opens when you hack it? Okay. Hang on. What was that thing in there, then? What 
What is this? Oh, that probably opens it. Is it, uh, is it gonna shut while we're inside? No? And what does this do? Training speech. I'm a little confused. Because now it doesn't shut. It doesn't shut because you went in it? I, I don't know. That's a little weird. You can use nanites to buy items from replicators. To use a replicator, right-click on it. Then left-click on the item you wish to purchase. The item you purchased will drop into the slot below. Make sure you pick up your purchases before you leave. Hi there. Please make your selection. Interesting. Thank you for choosing value wrap. Okay. You learned the basics of the technical skills. There are several other technical skills you'll learn throughout the course of your career, such as repairing items and modifying weapons. The cyber interfaces for these tasks are similar to the hacking interface. Before you enlist in the Navy, try out the other training courses. They'll be useful. All right. I'm not... I mean, I prefer the hacking over the cyberspace, but it's... Or over those other mini games, but it's just like... Inside, you will learn how to reach out with your mind. Do not let fear block your path. You're not going to tell me to join the Psy Division. We've provided you with a virtual interface and the temporary ability to project simulated psionic powers. Once you leave this area, these powers will be lost to you. Or will they? The red bar at the lower left of your screen tells you how many Psy points you have. Psy points symbolize the current ability to use your Psy powers. Psy hypos replenish your Psy points. Try using a Psy hypo and watch your Psy points increase. When you've reached your maximum in Psy points, move to the next station. This is a definitely a precursor to Bioshock. Med hypos, Psy hypos, you know. Ah, side points are full. Well then. This Psy amp amplifies your Psy powers and lets you project them into the real world. To equip it, pick it up and then hit the tilde key. Firing the Psy amp activates your currently selected Psy discipline. You currently have access to two disciplines, cryokinesis and kinetic redirection. Go into use mode and click on the arrows on the bottom right of the screen. This will cycle through your available Psy disciplines. Later, clicking on the arrows above the number to the left will allow you to select Psy disciplines from higher tiers. Use cryokinesis to destroy the robot and kinetic redirection to pull that nanite container towards you. Oh. Be careful. Holding down the mouse button can augment the power. But holding it down for too long will cause burnout, which will damage you. Oh. If you run out of Psy points, use another Psy Hypo. I see. It seems like it only uses one thing per. Let's damage ourselves. I see. So just let it go before it gets that. It still uses the... I'm gonna hurt myself again. Still uses the one. Alright. Oh, and that... Yeah. How do we... I wish... Is there a way to switch while we're in... Oh, it is. It just takes a second. And then you still have to right click. Got it. What is this? Thought I was grabbing the Psy. 
Oh, yeah, more nanites. Right on. Okay. So that seems to have a pretty decent range, at least. What if I use it on this guy? Nothing. And now I know what the, uh... I'm like, why is... Why does it show pictures of holding a ball? Mastery of the mind is a slow but rewarding process. Return to this area if you need more guidance. Before you enlist in the OSA, it would be useful to experiment in the other training courses. So we do have to choose, maybe. Marines, Navy, or OSA, which is, I don't know. UNN Recruitment Center. I guess we'll go in. Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. <laughs> the shuttle will take you to a UNN orbital space station, where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. Oh, 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 well, uh... <laughs> Did I... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That, I didn't... I didn't mean to do this. How do I... Am I stuck here forever now? <laughs> uh, if you fall into the pit, you're too dumb to join any of the branches. Oh my gosh, really? This <laughs> Well... Well, I guess this is as good a place to stop as any. Okay. <laughs> That's not... I, I, I didn't expect that. I, I really did not. I was like, oh, let me look down there. Let me see what's going on. Do I... Maybe there's a secret passage or something down here? Do I click? Let me try right-clicking. Uh, doesn't... Doesn't appear to be. Okay. Well, there you go, then. Uh, wait, maybe, maybe from this, maybe from this side. Let's try this. Okay. Oh, you lucky devil. Woo. All right. <laughs> Let's stop. I, I didn't expect to choose a class. Let's stop here. Uh... Sure. Oh, there you go. All right. Um, let me make sure there's no cats underneath me and wheel my chair back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a little break. Think about which which choice I want to make. Um, that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you guys are enjoying these episodes, enjoying the episodes from my channel. Uh, you know, I know I'm a little bit, I'm always a little bit slow to start because I'm kind of, you know, licking the walls and stuff, so to speak. I mean, figuratively, I'm, you saw me there, I was like trying to click on all the walls. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I take my time, I look into stuff. Hopefully that's, hopefully that's okay. If it's not, well, I, I'm not going to be like cutting out all the fluff and stuff. This is kind of how I roll. I just, I seek to improve, but I don't necessarily want to, you know, appease the short attention spans of, of, seems like the majority of people today. Not that that's a problem necessarily, but it, it can impact people's enjoyment of certain things. So, uh, something I like to do at the end of every episode is a unique positive moment. It is, you're supposed to do three Per day and you're supposed to write them down before you go to bed and uh it's supposed to be something that you don't do every day that's why they're unique uh but it doesn't have to be something amazing like winning the lottery it can just be like oh you know i'm i'm enjoying this coffee or whatever <clears throat> um you know it's supposed to increase your own happiness and and sort of reframe your perspective into a more neutral thing because you know, people watch the news and everything seems so terrible and, and it's just, you know, it's better. We're, 
it makes us more happy to have a more balanced perspective. Uh, and so finding, like I said, we do one, but finding three, like, makes you have to search throughout the day for positive things. And it makes you a little bit more, more positive, resistant to the negativity, I suppose. So what is your guys' unique positive moment for today? I mean, you don't have to answer. You don't have to. Some people comment, but you don't have to. It's it's just something to, to think about. <clears throat> um, for me, I ended up buying a uh, air compressor for my, my car tires because I've reasonably certain I have a slow leak in one. I've taken it to a couple of places and they can't find the leak, or at least they say they can't. Uh, so I just bought a little compressor so I don't have to keep paying a couple bucks to use the, the air pump at gas stations every you know month or so uh, and i just bought like a cheap one hopefully it'll last until i until it actually saves me money but but we'll see but that's my unique positive moment hopefully your guys is just as good if not better hopefully better of course and i hope to see you guys next time till then guys take care <laughs>